pay attention to this little girl. After the photo, she whispers something to Hamza Chimaev. And at first, what seemed like a happy moment takes a turn for the worst. This girl, along with most of the kids sitting in the audience, is an orphan. I'll reveal later what she whispered to him. Because despite Hamzat's best effort to comfort her, she rushes out of the stage, covering her tears. But it doesn't end there. At first, Hamzat seems okay. Then, doubt creeps in his eyes. The audience stares as Hamzat is trying to keep it together. Until he can't. He recomposes himself, but there's a darkness in his eyes. Followed by tears, he's trying to fight back. You see, even the toughest warriors can be broken. But throughout history, only one thing could put that look in a man's eyes. War. Everybody, everybody, I'm coming for everybody! Kill everybody! I've been in this game my whole life. I've never seen anything like him. Hamza is the f***ing truth. Savage. An absolute f***. Freak of nature it comes from a tough place. A tough place, you're gonna create tough men. Chechnya. This is Chechnya. When I was born, all the time I feel like something special inside in me, and how to find some way to show to the people. But would he get to the top or self destruct along the way? Every now and again, an athlete comes along who captivates the attention of the entire sport. You're not about that life, kid. You're not about it. This guy is not just training to be a champion. This guy is training to be the greatest of all time. At the center of it all, one woman who's starving. Hamzat's mother. She thinks always about us. When I was young, you don't understand why she gives she's food to us. You know, like she was waiting for us, like we finished the food and uh, this is things she left. Outside the walls of Chechnya's capital, the graffiti reads, Welcome to hell, part two. It was war. War against Russia and then the people in Chechnya, they get war against. The first Chechen war started in 1994, a few months after Hamza was born. The second took place in 1999. So almost all of Hamza's childhood was war. I don't know why it happened, these big things that kill people and uh, why we can't live like normal, you know. Shortly after Vladimir Putin becomes president, he appoints Hakmat Kadyrov as president of the Chechen Republic. And although the war eventually comes to an end, it never really leaves Hamza. The things you've seen when I grow up, it was hard and uh, sometimes some things go wrong inside, you know, like you get angry and no control and something like that. But although he struggles with controlling his emotions, someone else makes sure he stays on the right path. If that one was my big brother, maybe I was in some jail somewhere. Why do you say that? Because I'm sometimes a crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I need somebody to stop me. And he does that by making Hamza wrestle. I was only wrestler because my brother put me everywhere. If other village they have boxing, they have like Kambal Tambo. My brother wanna put me everywhere. Hamzat finds success wrestling while Chechnya suffers another blow. By a bomber attack in the Chechen hauptstadt Grozny sind der tschetschenische Präsident Kadyrov und mindestens 14 weitere Menschen getötet worden. Im russischen Fernsehen zeigt sich Präsident Putin mit Kadyrovs Sohn Ramzan. Putin bezeichnet Kadyrov als heroischen Mann. The very same Ramzan that will play a huge role in Hamzat's story. But we're not there yet. Because before he met Ramzan, Hamzat left the country for Sweden. Yeah, my brother was living here. That he told us, like, come here, it's good for us. After that, we stay here, we like it. His brother gets him a job in a poultry factory. We live like big family, mom and my brother, sister. We live in some apartment. And uh, every morning before the work, I go out and uh, running, you know, like you see the big house, nice house, nice apartment. And I was feeling bad for my mother. She don't speak Swedish and I don't have so many friends. Always was thinking how I'm gonna get this money and do something for my mother. She's gonna be happy, you know. And the answer to that question was Conor McGregor. I was watching his fight. I was working on a fight, Aldo. Oh! If he makes that money, why not me? Mentally, I'm stronger than him. I'm, my body's bigger than him. I know. If at that time, just meet him nice outside, I can broke him. You know? I believe in myself. 
but not everybody does. His brother wants him to keep a stable job and not pursue fighting. Всегда моя мама в меня верила, даже когда родной брат мне сказал, бросай этот спорт, там работа, и мама сказала, если хочешь там спать спортсменом, иди работай над этим. How did that first year of training go? I was in the gym, sleeping in the gym every day, four sessions, five sessions, like. What, so when you say you were sleeping in the gym, were you actually like sleeping there every night? No, I slept there three years. Three years? Yeah, I was so hungry to be somebody. Oh, cow in the I uh, the, the people say they live in the gym, but I'm re real living in the gym, brother. You were the only one living in the entire gym? Yeah. Did it get lonely? Sometimes I was alone here like all five months, sitting in this small room. It's like making your mind some crazy things. Sometimes I go punch back and you know, like middle of the night. It's hard to control yourself. The first time I saw that this man can be something is when I saw how hard he was working. Outworking everyone. Hours and hours of pounding and grinding. That's when I said, okay, this guy, he's gonna become a champion. And a lot of people telling me like, don't push him so hard. Don't let him like be this aggressive. Don't do this and that. But when you see a little speck of fire like this, you're not gonna pour water on it. You put petrol and you make it into an inferno. I've been around the world seeing fighter train. This guy is just doesn't get tired. He doesn't feel any pain. He's naturally an aggressive person, and this kid has been, has been sacrificing a lot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. These guys are fighting like they've got somewhere to be. Just six months ago, you're now 4 0. I'm gonna say it's official. I have my arm around the hottest fighter on the planet. The UFC could not ignore him any longer. He's an absolute freak of nature. Kamzat Chimaev, an exciting fighter, an exciting debut. Jeez oh, Louise. Man, look at this. I've been in this game my whole life. I've never seen anything like him. So, how do you feel, man? I mean, I from feel our amazing. Point, Amazing, I want to fight next week. And he's back. And oh. straight away shoots in. Oh, big hammer fist here. Oh, beautiful. Big blows here. That might be it. Yeah, there he goes. Stop, stop, stop. Kamzat Shemaev has the quickest turnaround victory in UFC history. Now listen, this kid wants to fight every weekend. And he's not joking. I can't do 10 fights one day. Any of his fights that I've seen, he hasn't met real resistance. I'm a tough guy and I'm going to show him that this time you bit off more than you can chew. Oh, I mean, he can do whatever he wants at this point. I'm convinced that this kid is the future of whatever division he wants to be in. Do you know who Hamza Shemaev is? Yes. I can't wait to see that mother fight again. Can I he fight again tomorrow? See, I want to see him fight too. Joe. Can he fight tomorrow? I can want to see him too. I don't know why, but I do want to <sighs> see him. He's got it. That was big fella. Who's that? Can you see him? Hey, what's up, Joe? What's happening, brother? How are you? Doing great. What are you doing? Editing the next fight film. What are you doing? We're in the middle of a podcast. Oh, wow. Okay. What's up with that movie, cuz? What's up with that movie, cuz? It got sponsored by Fume. Pretty pumped about it. That's how the Kennedys made their money. No, I don't I don't think so. Let me show you. Pull that up. With the new year coming up, a lot of people are going to try quitting their bad habits, cold turkey. Where you can make it easier by replacing the bad habit with a good one instead. What is that? This, my friend, is a flavored air device. Flavor for what? For air. There's no electronics, no vapor, no harmful chemicals. It's all completely natural. But the inside of it? Yeah. That doesn't flavor it. Check this out. Slide it out, take a flavored core, put it inside, slide back, boom. Enjoy the flavor. Y'all make that shit easy to understand. 
Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting and de-stressing while breaking your bad habit. He says some shit over there that sounds like it's gonna turn me inside out. I mean, I wasn't sure what to expect with the taste at first, but it's really good. If it feel good to you, it must be good for you. Exactly. I mean, you know how we roll, Snoop. Yes, yes sir. sir! Drop the beat. Give it to me, Jamie. This is like a cultural shifting moment. It's Snoop Doggy Dog with the caviar. It's Pat Gaviar with the deal for y'all. To tell you the truth, I swoop in the coop. Try fume.com slash Patrick Gaviar and get 10% off. Chill till the next episode. Or just scan the QR code. All you heard was Papa, don't hit me no more. Join Fume and flex with your flavored core. That was amazing. That might have been my favorite moment ever on the podcast. <laughs> that was amazing. All right, guys, I got to go. Take care, brother. You take care, guys. Keep it together, bitch. Oh, and thanks to Fume for sponsoring this. Bye-bye. Oh, this man is smart. Who is this guy? He's the GOAT. I kind of fanboy. And he's like, so cool, man. He's the coolest. Right? He's the coolest. If I need, you know, people like him to inspire me to want to keep living and to want to keep being healthy. Yeah. Почувствовал ли ты вообще вот этот вот сумасшедший рост популярности? Ну, популярность я не за этим гонюсь, если честно. Я рад, что заработал эти деньги и сейчас в голове такая каша. Моя тетя недавно умерла. И ну, перед этим я сказал маме, я буду зарабатывать скоро большие деньги, иншалла, все будет хорошо. Мама просто так сказала, если бы были бы у тебя сейчас эти деньги. И чтобы больше не допускать такого, чтобы у меня были деньги. Did you talk with Kamza today? No, not today. Not today? It's like, I wasn't feeling so good. Man. When he finished the training on Tuesday, you couldn't even walk up to his room. He didn't even have the energy to go up to his room, he fell asleep in the lobby. Kamza. His friends called me and like, hey, Kamza can't even speak, you know? Well, you know what he did? He kept training. He kept training while he had COVID and he was hospitalized twice. He made the UFC yesterday. Very unfortunate teammate. There's nothing we can do. He was on death's door. Yeah, man. coughing up blood and that everything. That dude would not stop training. That's how crazy he is. Do you think he's going to make it? Doctor said to him, come in the room, you have the cancer, man. Jeez. Then you think, man, you finish, you know. I didn't know what to say to my family. I didn't know what to say to the people. Man. That's oh. why I'm said I'm retired. Man. Maybe it's finished for me, like. But one person in Chechnya wouldn't let him retire. After many years in power, Ramzan Kadyrov developed a liking for surrounding himself with celebrities. Past visitors have included the boxer Floyd Mayweather, the actor Steven Seagal, and the actress Hilary Swank. Happy birthday, Mr. President. When he reads about Hamza's retirement, Kadyrov grabs the phone. He called me. What's wrong on? I said, they say maybe cancer. He said, no, you're not cancer. Come on, come back home and they're gonna help you with being healthy. Promise me you come back to the cage. I said, okay, brother, we do it. I come to, to my country. And they bring other doctor and he said, no, it's not cancer, it's corona. They helped me a lot there. And after three weeks, I start to feel much better. In the following months, videos of Hamza and Kadir of sparring are released online. In these awkward exchanges, Hamza lets Kadyrov get the upper hand. And although Hamza is smiling, everyone watching is wondering what's actually going on. Kamaru Uzman, the man at the top of Hamza's division and one of the greatest welterweights of all time. Oh, I'm ready. But before he got there, Hamza would have to get through the beach. Hamza had been away for of competing for like a little bit more than a year. Awesome, you too. Thank you. Yep, you're good. Yep, that's enough. <laughs> He seemed very excited. He said, it's the leech versus the wolf. Let's see who eats who. What is your response to that? I'm going to eat him. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, she might have shot it close to shot. He's talking to Dana. He was yelling crazy. He should have been the whole fight. Oh, my goodness. The leech eating a lot of big shots here. Trying to control Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's under the neck. Oh, under the chin. Yeah. Hamzad is back on top, where he meets a fighter going in the opposite trajectory, Darren Till. 
Early in his career, Darren Till took the UFC by storm, but when he failed to capture the belt against Tyron Woodley, his career started declining. After accumulating a string of losses, Till decides to go train with Hamza. He said some nice words when I got beat my last fight, and he was like, Till, come and train with me, but I just said, you know what, I'm going. He counts down here, Sweden, Stockholm. And I just got there, and straight away, we just clicked. We sparred the first day. After one, two days, we become like best friends, always hang each other, training together. He's not my friend, he's my brother. He's grow up in England, and grow up in Czechia, but we didn't know who was brothers. Then he called me, I'm your brother. I said, yes, my brother, and then we meet. And like that. Internet's going wild about you and Hamzat training together. Yeah! 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 All have Smash Bros caps on. Yeah. Yeah. It's Team Smash Bros for life. Kill everybody. Smash everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you and Darren Till, you walk, you put your arm yeah. on your shoulder like this. Yeah, it's you my brother. Brother, you like killer. You gotta be killer. You cannot have best friend like this. The Hamza's driving like an absolute maniac. And I mean a maniac. On the wrong side of the road. Oh my purposely. God. Purposely. I'm like, guys, you're going to get arrested. Gilbert Burns is a good fighter. I've got a lot of respect for him, but I do think Hamza is going to dominantly win. Hey, I'm going to smash that guy and knock him out one minute, Wes. I promise you. It's too little, boy. Let's do it. Can't wait. Scared, boy. Mr. Burns, even though you're the second round welterweight, what's your comment on being the underdog? It don't matter, you know, matters what I'm Of course, he's underdog. The oh, king is yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Woo! What he said? Oh, he's mad. He hit the table. The f See you Saturday, buddy. His mindset was not what we trained. His mindset was he's going to go in there and he's going to destroy the guy. This was just an all out brawl, which we were training not to have. Why did he just throw the game plan out? He threw the game plan out because he promised everyone that he was going to knock him out. After getting hit only twice in his first four UFC fights, Hamza absorbs 119 significant strikes against Burns. I was surprised that Hamza Chimaev was declared a victor. You know, a lot of people gave that fight to Gilbert Burns. He could have lost that thing. So Shemaev is definitely overrated. Everybody thought this guy would ragdoll everybody he fights. He thinks he could walk on water a little too much, and that's partially our fault. What a fight, Hamza. How are you feeling right now? Brilliant fight of the night. This is what Hamza needed. He needed someone like Gilbert Burns, who, in my opinion, is one of the toughest mother... Out there. It's it. He, he needed it. That's, that's how you grow from these things. So, brilliant fight. Have we got the win? <laughs> It wasn't easy. <laughs> no, no, tough. Yeah. The world finds itself back at war, which fuels criticism against Hamzat for promoting his ties to Kadyrov, while the rest of Chechnya faces conscription. My face is everywhere in Las Vegas, bro. Now everyone knows me. They give just clothes and come in. Oh, it's you. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the name Hamzat Chimaev to you. What do you think of this guy? I think he's great. You guys hype him up to be this great giant. The guy quit to the common cold, and I don't want to ever hear that guy's name again. You guys just really want this Chimaev beef. Since you guys want it, bring me some Manscaped Clippers. I'm cutting beard off. The hazmat Ch Chimaev. Yeah, yeah, they're coming at me with him, and I'm like, hold on, don't disrespect me like that. He is, he's not that close. 
our, our toughness. A lot of people talk about I'm from the ghetto, I'm from this and that. It's not the same thing. He was in the school, he had a good life, he had the bread, but we didn't have that. It's totally different when you grow up in the war. Hey, Hamza, if you're in there, don't be a bitch. Just to exactly what's going on right now. Shit show. Absolute shit show back there. Stop! 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 30-something people. You piss on. Talk about interviews. Now say something, huh? Everyone like playing gangster. Now, come on. Come here. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Yeah, this ain't gonna happen. Trust me when I tell you this is the right decision not to do this press conference right now. And, uh, yeah. I hear you. For everybody's safety, this is the right decision. He was alone with the DS team. How can that be possible? Right. Right. The pressure is on him. He better finish me because he's the next killer in town. We're cutting weight, and the first like four kilos went like easy, no problem. Then we went and started doing a warm bath. His body was like, just he started cramping up. He started like not feeling well. The UFC set up a medical team. And once they saw how he was, they told us to stop. Comes up wanted to try, but the medic team stopped us. I'm f pissed. All right, next fighter to the scale is the other athlete around whom this entire fight card was built, the number three ranked UFC welterweight contender, the undefeated Hamzat Shimaev. One seventy-eight and a half. One seventy-eight and a half. The official weight for Hamzat Shimaya. How do you miss that badly? One seventy-eight and a half. It's kind of smiling. Hey, no big deal. It doesn't even this look is... like he's that drawn out. Honestly, it doesn't. Like he's. It doesn't, look, it doesn't like he's, look like he's drawn out. It does not look like he's that drawn out. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know how you miss by that much. It's eight pounds. This is the biggest moment of his career one step away, maybe one and a half steps away from a title shot, and you miss by eight How do you miss pounds? by eight pounds? And he f***ed up the entire main event. Oh, he was I, supposed this to be was fighting recently. Nate. He's yeah, supposed to be right. fighting Nate Diaz. The new card now, we have uh, Nate Diaz versus Tony Ferguson, and Hamza Chemaev will fight Kevin Holland. So did Kevin Holland have a choice? Like, no, I don't want this fight. Absolutely. Got it. Because, but I mean, Kevin Holland's a gangster. Holland, we smash Diaz, we smash them all. Boris is coming. No, 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 no,
You heard the reaction tonight. The fans were not happy with you. How did that make you feel? Were you angry at that? Were you sad? Or did you not care? You care about that shit? I don't care. I care about my family. I care about my career. I care about my money. So what now? The people don't live with me now. One day they're with me. One day we're not, not with me. So... For another full year, it seems like Hamza disappears. Hamza Chimaev, Boris the Wolf, 12 and 0, undefeated, mixed martial arts phenom. Where is he? He was on a plane, he was headed somewhere else, he touched down in Russia, they found him on the plane, they take him off and they seize his passport. I mean, the story was something along these lines. Then he said, listen, looks like he's going through some personal problems, but he will be back soon. In the meantime, Darren Till loses another fight and decides to leave the UFC. What's up, everybody? UFC President Dana White. I'm here to announce the guy everybody's been waiting to hear about, Hamzat Shemaev, returns. And he will be facing Paulo Costa. And another war begins. Paulo Costa went public, said he had surgery three weeks ago. Is there any danger that that fight could be off? Uh, yeah, it's possible. When do you think we'll get a verdict on if he's going to be able to fight or not? Very soon. What's up, everybody? You know what we've been dealing with this week. So, the number four welterweight in the world, Hamza Chemaev, is moving up the middleweight, and he will face the number one welterweight in the world, Kamaru Usman. At middleweight, Usman versus Chemaev. The winner will have a shot at the champion. You ready? Stay here. Prepare. Time to take it. You'll never be fighting alone. It will not be different today. And in the midst of it all, one question from an orphan girl. She reportedly asked, my father is dead. Can you please teach my brothers how to fight? I'm here with Hamza Chabayu. Hamza still undefeated. What a fantastic fight. Hey guys, you know what's happening in the world right now? Oh, see the kids dying. It doesn't matter whatever in the world, Ukraine, Syria, Afghanistan, Palestine, you say it doesn't matter. When kids die, it's hard, guys. I love the kids. If you're just crying, I know how it feels. Inshallah, we'll be good in the world. I hope so. Muslim, Christian, Jewish, doesn't matter. Please, guys, be together. Let us live in this world good. Let us be happy. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're wondering what happens when you fall on the wrong side of Ramzan Kadyrov, there's no need to look further than the story of Fedor Emelianenko. I dove into what happened to him when he crossed Ramzan Kadyrov in this documentary right here. I hope you'll enjoy it, and I'll see you there. Take care.